Um, I now call Deputy Desi Ellis. There's 30 Ramal. minutes in this speaking slot. Sorry? There are 30 minutes in this speaking oh, yeah, slot. So I'm thinking that uh, I should be shared in some way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, Minister, uh, uh, there seems to be a fundamental shift from local authority functions to setting up new bodies, such as Irish Water, and in the case of this bill, commercial vehicle roadworthiness testing, as well as the issuing of driving licensing. To the, to the Road Safety Authority. The replacing of local authorities as the agency responsible is a retrograde step. Local authorities have been starved of funding and have still managed to deliver excellent services. There is an old saying, you don't fix what's not broken. And by and large, the testing of vehicles and the roadworthiness is borne out by this slogan. There is a real danger that the centralisation of these services will lead to job losses and a, lock, a lack of access to local people who know where these services are located. This is not about a better and safer service. This is about cost cutting and in the long run part of a privatisation policy which your party and Fine Gael is driving both in the short term and the long term. Centralising everything makes your agenda easier and putting everything on an, automatic free, an automated free phone makes the lives of citizens a misery and will undoubtedly lead to a lessening of the service. Your plan for the water system and water charges is similar to Fine Gael's entire political basis, is to end the state's provision of services at the expense of the private sector's thirst for profit. I can't see how safety is served by that agenda. These changes will do nothing radical to the system except make them less user-friendly and unaccountable. The RSA will not be running test centres. That is not to say that certain provisions of this bill have merits though. The problem is they are all premised on the licensing and testing coming under the RSA, which is unhelpful to sustainable provision of good services. As Impact said of this proposal, it flies in the face of an OECD report on public service in Ireland, which found local authorities should be used more, not less, in the provision of services like this. This is not evidence-based or even anecdotally based, as myself and many of my colleagues have rarely ever reported to us any difficulties with the current model. It is ideologically driven and a devious attempt to softly, softly usher in less democratic and public control of services in the interests of private profit. A saving of 4.5 million is touted as one of the great benefits. I must say that despite knowing better to be surprised, I am repeatedly shocked by the government's willingness to herald with trumpet the savings of a few million euro when you are wasting massive amounts elsewhere. Of course, the question is begged, how much of this saving is based on a transfer of funding responsibility from the state to the hard-pressed people getting their commercial vehicles tested who will be given millions a year to the RSA on testing alone and who's to say they won't raise this. The provisions around better testing standards, training and equipment are good and I have no problem with them. But they are the fig leaf on which this very rotten deal is being sold. There is nothing to stop the state placing more standardised requirements on local authorities or implementing a database are keeping better track of licenses issued. There is nothing to stop them putting in place measures to improve Garda enforcement, save their great desire to cut everything they can from the Garda. This will also lead to the role of councillors being lessened, who, as you know, and you've done it yourself, Minister, made representations to local authorities on these issues and other issues. And always had great access to doing this. Rules and regulations can be improved by the local authority. Road safety is the primary consideration. And there has been huge strides forward in terms of road safety. And the appointment of Mr. Gayborn to the RSA contributed enormously to this over the years. 
Speed checks have also been uh, have, have con contributed to the road safety issues and we've seen many vehicles around and that is very welcome as well as on our main highways and on byways. Recent programs about malpractices at NCT centres are not the fault of the local authorities. These have been uh, brought in as private firms to do these and with the great heralded um, uh, program that we see in about the NCT test in Ballymone about the malpractices there were not the fault of the local authorities and this is part of the agenda that's been driven here to blame the local authorities so we can make it easier to put it over to the RSA. Proper checks and balances are needed, nobody disputes that. The transfer of staff and expertise, what is going to be the cost of all this? Setting up this um, big conglomerate, this, this new, new, new uh, RSA, the centre, we have to transfer staff, all the expertise, the people who have been on the ground in the local authorities and the cost of this to the taxpayers and the cost of the inconvenience wherever this may be located and wherever the families are end up pushing. I also want to remind you, Minister, under the Good Friday Agreement signed by this government in this state in 1998, the House recognises, and I quote, the importance of measures to facilitate the reintegration of prisoners into the community by providing support both prior to and after release, including assistant directives towards availing of employment opportunities, retraining and or reskilling and further education. The agreement recognises the political context of the conflict which happened in Ireland between 1916 and its, 1960 and its signing and that actions carried out by IRA volunteers were politically motivated. As such, IRA prisoners were political prisoners and following the ceasefire, they were released from prison as part of a process of peace building. And I once again will seek an amendment to exclude people who were under the Good Friday Agreement from any of the offences you've, you've listed. And, and I believe that your commitment should be in this line, in line with what previous governments have signed up to. I'll set out my stall in terms of, of the other amendments that we will be putting. There will be a number of amendments we will put to this, and um, I will um, put those t together at a later stage.